Well, here's one familiar face. How are you, Dickon? Nicely, Master Richard, nicely. Good to see you home, sir. Good it is to be back after three years. Hatch! 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 It's the boy, he's back. Why, he's supposed to be on his way to France with Buckingham. Aye, but I just saw him ride in. Who tells him about his father? Not us. Greet him and put a good face on your man. Aye. Sir Daniel? Yes? Richard's home. Poor lad. This makes it very awkward. Can't be helped. He'd have to be told sooner or later. Welcome home, Master Richard. The apple yard, you old bowstring. Bennett Hatch. So it's Sir Richard now. We heard about it, lad. Yes, knighted by the king. But I wouldn't have lived through that last campaign if you two old war buzzers hadn't beat me into being a soldier years ago. Oh, Richard. Uncle Daniel, I'm glad to see you. And I, you. I've heard great things about you at the Battle of Tewkesbury. Nothing to what I heard about you and your exploits against Warwick. Sir Oliver, you should have heard Buckingham rave about my neat handwriting. I told him you stood over me with a birch rod while I learnt my letters. Well, spare the rod. <laughs> Where's father? That gouty foot put him to bed again? Well, I... I wish I had better news for you, Richard. Why, is anything wrong? Your father's dead. Dead? How did it happen? He was murdered, here in this room. Murdered by whom? By your neighbor, Sir John Sedley. Sedley? But I've known him all my life. True, he's always been for Lancaster, but he and father had the greatest respect for each other. I know, Richard, but great bitterness grew between them this last few years of the war. But murder, that doesn't sound like Sedley. I know it's a great shock, but you'd best hear all of it. You see, as an enemy of York over many years, Sedley was ordered banished to France and his estates declared forfeit to the crown. That's understandable, the spoils of war. The Duke of Gloucester awarded Sedley Manor to me for my long services in the war. I meant to deal fairly with Sir John and his daughter and provide an ample revenue for them to maintain themselves in exile. It's more than he deserved. But Sedley thought differently. And when I sent men to effect the Duke's order, Sir John burnt down his manor house and his people drove off the cattle and laid waste to the fields. I know, I rode past there today. It'll be a year or more before we can rebuild Sedley Manor, and I hope I may impose upon your hospitality until then. Of course. Go on. What then? Well, Hatch and Appleyard arrested Sir John and brought him before your father and me. Uh, Sir Oliver was also a witness. You'll understand that in destroying Crown property, Sedley was guilty of treason. Nevertheless, I was still inclined to be lenient. Your father also tried to reason with him. But Sir John became bitter and violent. He accused your father of instigating the action against him in order to obtain his property for me. Then, before any of us could make a move to interfere, Sedley snatched a dagger from the table and killed him. Where is Sedley now? In the monastery graveyard. We executed him, put an arrow through his heart. I see. If you don't mind, I'd like to go to my room. As the new master of Tunstall, your father's apartment is now yours. I've kept it in readiness for you. Thank you. Think he's satisfied with our story, Daniel? What if he isn't? The thing's over and done with. There are only four of us who know the truth.
Who's your leader, man? Say his name while you still can speak. Ah. Tussle never knew the lash while father was alive. We'll not have it now. It was Sir Daniel's order, Master Richard. I'll see Sir Daniel. Cut him down, take care of his wounds. Convey to the Duke of Gloucester that his orders have been received and will be executed. They'll give you a fresh horse in the stable. I've stopped him in the courtyard. There must be no more of that. As you wish. Your master here now, Richard. But you don't understand, Richard. The man being punished is a Lancastrian outlaw. The forest is alive with them, thieves and cutthroats. Things have changed since you went away, Richard. This is no longer war, but these men are still our enemies. There'll be no peace until we wipe them out. Then we shall wipe them out, but not with torture. As you will. But you'll come around to us when you see what kind of men we're fighting. By the way, you'd best hear this. His Grace, the Duke of Gloucester, hereby proclaims Mistress Sedley a ward of the Crown. Briefly, he's appointed me her guardian. Rather you than me. I'm ordered to take her out of the convent at Tilsbury and keep her here in my care until a suitable marriage is arranged. She still has dower rights to half the revenue from Sedley Manor, when there is a revenue again. That means having her here, the daughter of my father's murderer. I don't Be charitable, my boy. Don't blame an innocent girl for the sins of her father. Perhaps you're right, Sir Oliver. When will you fetch her, uncle? To tell the truth, Richard, as her father's judge and executioner, it would be less awkward if you went for me. As you wish. Well, we have all the trappings loaded, Master Richard. Good. Enough for a queen. Keep a brave heart, my child. I'll try, Sister Margaret. Remember, you can always find a refuge with us, whatever happens. I won't forget. You've been most kind. Sir Richard. Yes, Sister? Here is Mistress Sedley. I leave her to your care. Are you ready, Mistress Sedley? As ready as I shall ever be, Sir Richard. Understand this. You come to us by the King's order. I assure you, it's not my wish. Understand this too, then. I go only by the King's order. Quite an army. Am I to consider myself under arrest? They're here only for your protection. The forest is full of outlaws. Outlaws? They're mostly good men of Lancaster driven into exile by your Yorkist cruelty. I'd feel safer with them than at Tunstall Castle. Birds are a warning when someone's skulking after you. Better call up a couple of flankers. Aye, for there's many a Lancastrian in these woods who'd give his ears for a shot at me. Two of you men move forward and ride with Appleyard. Just a little added protection against those outlaw friends of yours. You mean men who have been robbed and persecuted and driven from their homes? There was persecution on both sides, and murder. If you mean my father, he was no murderer. He was tried and judged.
find that bowman. Pluck out the shaft, Richard. If I do, you'll die. You'll have to stand it till I can get you home. Two of you men, get him on a horse. Brave lads, your Lancaster outlaws, shooting a man from ambush. Who among them calls himself John Amendol? Even if I knew, would you really expect me to tell you? His name's on this message. It accuses my uncle of killing my father. I'll tell you this much. If I received a message from John Amendol, I'd believe every word of it. Drink the clary wine, at Friar John, ye friend of mine. Then roam the woods like home and true, and down a king's fat deer or two. <laughs> You're a good man, Lawless. Hold your rod this time. What have you got? What have I got? A bit of this, a bit of that, picked up here and there by the grace of providence, and my own dexterity. <laughs> Drink the clary wine. That Friar John, ye friend of mine. Is it done? Aye. As neat a shot as I ever made. I carried him off, but he won't live through the day. What of Joanna? Is she safe and well? She looked in the bloom of health. Good. She'll be safe enough at Tunstall Castle. Daniel Brackley knows better than to harm the King's ward. What about the boy? He seemed troubled in spirit. You could see it in his eyes. Our Black Arrow messages have made him think. That's what I've hoped for. Oh, thanks. I'm dry as a salt herring. Your health, Sir John Amendo. Here's to the next Black Arrow. Three to go. Three Black Arrows for three Black Hearts. Let's get the fry. I hope so. Joanna, I'm so glad you weren't hurt. I was in no danger, Sir Daniel, at any time. How's Apollyon? Done for, I'm afraid. Sir Oliver's gone for the fry. Now you see what I meant this morning, Richard. Not a very pleasant introduction to Tunstall, is it, Joanna? On the contrary, Sir Daniel. You couldn't expect Sir John Sedley's daughter to be shocked by the death of any of his executioners. Spoken like a girl of spirit. But remember, I'm only acting as the King's agent in all matters. I'll try to see it that way from now on. May I go to my rooms? Why, certainly. Dame Carter's made them ready for you. Uh, welcome to Tunstall, my lady. Thank you. It's been many years since a pretty girl crossed our threshold, Joanna. story of my father's death. What do you know about it? I can tell you nothing, Richard. He's the friar. Now let me be. I'm glad I was in time with the friar. At least he won't die without religious consolation. Yes, he seemed to have something on his conscience. We all feel like that when the end draws near. Some more than others. He appeared to be troubled about father's death. Really? What did he say? What could he have said? You should know you were one of the witnesses. Nothing. There is nothing you have not been told, my boy. I hope you're telling me the truth. But 
luck up, lad. We'll make them pay three to one for Appleyard. I'm putting a new edge on my blade. It looked like a saw. Hatch, there was a message on that black arrow that felled Appleyard. More threats from men who hate us. Use your good sense, lad. What else do you expect from enemies we've dealt hard with after victory? There's more to it than that, Hatch. This narrows down to a personal matter between the four of you who witnessed Father's death. Where's the message, and why haven't you shown it to Sir Daniel? Because it names him as my father's murderer. And it says you're next on their list. Take my advice and burn that message. They're just trying to poison your mind against him. There's just one thing, Hatch. How could it happen that with four of you present, you let John Sedley seize a dagger and attack Father? We... Uh, we were taken by surprise, lad, before we could raise a finger. I've never seen anyone take you by surprise. Take my advice, lad. Let the dead rest in peace. You have not to gain in this line but trouble. Hatch, I'm going to find out the truth about this, no matter whom it hurts. Now, Hatch, what's all this nonsense? I tell you, Sir Daniel, Richard won't stop until he finds out what he wants to know. Daniel. If he should learn of certain things that would... Uh, would have what? Well, confuse the boy. Our position here wouldn't be... Well, what I mean is, if the son of Sir Harry Shelton should get to high authorities... You fool, if we say Sedley killed him, who's to dispute it? I'm not so sure. You leave Richard to me. I'll handle him. Daniel. Hmm. Rather sudden friendship. Hatch, tell Richard I want to see him. But it's hard to believe, Joanna. Four men I've known and trusted all my life. But it should have been just as hard for you to believe that an honorable knight like my father would murder an unarmed man. It was. That's when I first questioned the story. Then the Black Arrow messages. The castle garrisoned by Daniel's cutthroats. Not one of father's men left. They're lying, Joanna. I intend to find out why. Richard, now I think I can tell you what I haven't dared to before. Take pardon, Master Richard. Your uncle wants to see you. Very well, Hatch. Take care, Richard. I will. Come in, Richard. Cup of wine? No, thank you. What have I been hearing about you? If there's anything on your mind... There is. What became of Father's men who garrisoned Tunstall while we were away at the war? Why, most of them were killed off in local bickerings with Sedley Manor. There was only a scant dozen ancient cripples left when I got home, so I had Sir Oliver pension them off. They wouldn't be much use to you against the forest outlaws. I wonder if my danger lies in that direction. It's a rather startling statement, Richard, but it seems to stem from what Hatch has just been telling me. You're letting the lying schemes of this John Amendol, whoever the rogue may be, turn you against your own flesh and blood your oldest friends. Now, as I understand it, I'm actually accused of taking your father's life, of murdering my own brother. May I see this latest invention of outlaw fancy? You'd best hear this, Oliver. It concerns you, too. Bennett Hatch be next, then Sir Oliver, too. The last for Sir Daniel that ran Sir Shelton through. Black arrows, threats, accusations, penny rhymes. Do you really doubt my word, Richard? I want only truth and justice, and I mean to get it. Will you give me your knightly oath on this matter? Willingly. Upon my knightly word of honor, upon the eternal welfare of my spirit, and as I shall answer for my duty... <laughs> Put up your swords, said Shelton. I'll do it, Daniel said, and ran him through. So Shelton fell beneath the Bible, dead. My notes. Here you to the turret. Bind that bandit archer. Aye, sir. And you. Take some men to the edge of the forest. Hurry. It's Oliver. Yes? Just a moment. I want a word with you. Put your hand on that Bible. Take your oath as a knight that you're keeping nothing from me. Uh, don't ask that of me. Isn't it enough that I swear that I'm innocent? No, it's not enough. Did Daniel kill him? Answer me. I've... Uh, 
I've told you all I can, Richard. Cowardly fool. But I, I told him nothing. You couldn't have made it worse. So, Daniel, there's something wrong. The boy passed me by without a word. Hatch, did you examine Sedley after he fell from Appleyard's arrow? There was no need. The arrow was buried in his heart. I turned him over to the friar for burial. The friar? Did you know him? No, sir. He was a stranger. We've been tricked. There's only one man who could have written that message. Who but John Sedley would know the last words between Harry Shelton and me? What shall we do? If he and Richard should ever get together and go to Buckingham and the King, there's only one thing to do. Hatch, first see to it at once that neither the boy nor the girl leave the castle. First the father, now the son. Daniel, is there no other way? I'm beginning to think I never wanted it any other way. Tunstall and Sedley Manor combined would make a great estate. <laughs> you in the corridor and followed. The first thing you men think of is bloodletting. There's no other way out of this now. But they won't let you get to him. Joanna, he killed my father. Not in fair fight, but unarmed and helpless. Yes, I know, I know, and then blame my father for it. But even if you do fight to get to him and kill him, you'll only make things worse. You talk in riddles. Wait, please. There's more to be considered than your personal vengeance, Richard. If you kill Daniel Brackley, Gloucester will not only have your head, he'll track down every man in the forest. Including my father. Your father? That's what I tried to tell you in the garden. John Amendall is my father. But they executed him. I don't know exactly what happened, but somehow father escaped. He got word to me that he would live in the forest until justice could be done. He's a gallant man. He has no weakling for a daughter. Sir Harry Shelton's son isn't so bad either, if he'd only listen to reason. Oh, Richard, what we must do now is get to my father in the forest. What then? Be outlawed ourselves? Not unless your King Edward of York is really as evil as we Lancastrians always thought him. That's it, of course. I'll take your father to the Duke of Buckingham. He'll intercede with the King. I bow to your brains, my lady. Well, it's about time somebody appreciated women. England will never be great until she's had a queen or two. A good idea, Your Majesty. A very good idea. But it won't get us through the gates. He's doubling the guard. Well, what does the royal brain say to that? It says what all queens say when they're stumped. Good sir knight, you get us out of this mess. To hear is to obey. I hope your majesty doesn't faint at the sight of spiders and rats. What? After seeing Yorkers around all these years? You'll pay for that when we get down to the water cell. Water cell? Yes, the underwater hole in the castle wall, where you duck under and through and then swim the moat. Pass me a light. Oh, it's like a tomb. You first, majesty. I? Just to hold the light till I can bolt the underside of the trap. I do hope you know what you're doing. I used to play Robin Hood in these passages, if I haven't forgotten them. Oh, that's a pleasant thought. chain of lies. He might be useful to us. Yes, if my uncle lets him live to testify. So. What now? The battlements. We can jump from the wall into the moat.
made a change in the working of this door. Stay here. Don't make a sound. Stand where you are. Good work, lad. Haven't forgot what I taught you. Keeping me in the light while you stay in darkness. But now, Hodge, you wouldn't kill your old teacher. I'll ask the questions, Hatch. How do we get out of here? Easy with that bow, lad. I mean no harm. <laughs> Too bad. I thought you'd learned how far a sword could reach. I have. One thing I can still teach you, that's how to die. That won't get us out of here. Is it worth my life if I tell you the way? I don't have much choice. There's an iron bar on the floor. Pull up on it hard. Joanna, try it. It's opened. Good. Come down and tie him up. Stand. Under your sword belt. Put your hands behind your back. Try it. Bolt it from beneath. Get to the battlements. Done for. Hey, uh, not a drop on him either. It's young Shelton. So it is. You found him none too soon. Give me a hand. Up to the left. <laughs> Who's that, boys? Martin, get me a pannikin of water. Make 
Make a poultice of some old bread. I never saw this. Poultice. Who's the name? Sir John Drew. Sir John. Who is it, Lawless? Young Shelton. Found him in the forest not far from his castle. Pierced through the shoulder. Not by one of our men, I trust. No, by an arrow from a castle crossbow. I hated to leave her in Daniel's hands, Sir John. But our one chance was to get to you and take our case directly to the Duke of Buckingham and the King. Oh, easy, lad. You haven't the strength of a sick field mouse. Here, down a little of this ale. It's the most palatable blood maker I know. You did well, Richard. But there'll be no journey for you for some days. You're not strong enough to ride. At least I'm strong enough to learn the truth about my father's death. I'll tell it to you, lad. You know, of course, there was always bitterness in Daniel's heart because your father, a Shelton, inherited Tunstall, while he, a younger half-brother, got nothing. I never thought about it. I was still just a lad when Daniel went away to the wars ten years ago. I've seen little of him since. The whole countryside knew it. And the night I was brought to Tunstall a prisoner, Daniel and your father were no longer mincing words. Don't threaten me in my own house, Daniel. I want you and your men out of here by morning. I'm acting in Gloucester's name. And now that Sedley has destroyed his manor house, this is my headquarters for as long as I choose to stay. Come in. Good evening, Sir John. I had hoped now that peace has come to welcome you in a different fashion. Thank you, Sir Harry. There can be no peace while tyrants like Sir Daniel and his crook-backed master, the Duke of Gloucester, revenge themselves on honest men now at their mercy. Sir John, in burning your manor house, destroying your property, you have subjected yourself to the charge of high treason. When Gloucester gets my report, I doubt if anything so gentle as banishment will be your lot. Hatch, disarm him. Take him to the dungeon. I'd rather die here and now. I'd be glad to accommodate you. This will simplify matters. Bradley, Daniel, put up your sword, Daniel. Gladly. Oh. Now defend yourself. No sword point for you, Sedley. I'm sparing you for better things. In the presence of four witnesses, you will foully attack and slay my unarmed brother. That's murder, Sedley. Take him away. We'll make a public example of him. No judge in this country will believe that charge, Brackley. I'm judge here, Sedley. This country's under martial law. Take him away. Fortunately for me, Daniel made a public occasion of my execution, which enabled my old friend Lawless to get to me in the courtyard. Prisoner Sir John Sedley, having been judged guilty of treason here proclaimed, in that he did give aid and comfort to the king's enemies, that he did refuse to surrender the manor of Sedley which was confiscated by the king's order, that he did burn and raise said manor, and that he did most foully murder Sir Harry Shelton. Now, therefore, by order of the king's officer, Sir Daniel Brackley, he shall this day die in a manner suited to his rank and station by an arrow well and truly aimed to the heart. making peace with heaven? I think it would be wise to be both just and merciful, Daniel. Let him be shriven, but quickly. Courage, my friend. Lawless, did you think I'd forget the time you saved me from the gallus? Stand fast, Sir John. Let us pray Appleyard's aim still true. Enough! Get on with it! So perish.
banish all traitors to His Majesty King Edward. By your leave, sir, I'll take Sir John to rest in holy ground. I was a friar on his estate for years. Take him, friar. Go home now. Away with you. And then Lawless led me to this refuge. And soon we were joined by other victims of Daniel's oppressions. I took the name John Amendall, hoping for the day when we Lancastrians might obtain justice. It's no longer a matter of Lancaster or York, Sir John. I'm as anxious to obtain justice for you as I am for myself. That's what we hoped for. We counted on your being a fair man, like your father. What's wrong with mankind, Sir John? That my uncle can turn men like Oliver Oates, Hatch and Appleyard into cutthroats and conspirators. Greed, my boy. Promises of a share in the spoils. Hatch and Oliver Oates have been given the farms of several of our men, driven from their homes because they refuse to submit to your uncle's oppressive demands. We must move faster, John. My Lord Buckingham has King Edward's favor, but so has Daniel's friend at court, Richard of Gloucester. If we let Daniel make the first move... Steady, lad. Rest easy, Richard. When you're able to ride to London, Lawless will get horses for us. He'll do, Lawless. He's brought me new hope. And then what happened? Well, we followed his tracks, Sir Daniel, to where the outlaws must have found him and carried him off. There was every sign that the boy was badly wounded, if not dead. Well, that calls for a change of plans, Hatch. Sure you're fit for the journey, Richard? Yes, the shoulder's as good as new. Well, where are the horses? Did you get them? No use, lad. We're too late. If they goes in every village and at every crossroad between here and Tillsbury. There goes our last court of appeal. Daniel's done his work well, Sir John. He's turned King Edward against me. What do you propose to do now, my boy? I'll be only too glad to join you and your men, if you'll have me. Gladly, lad. We'll have to work it out in our fashion now. Another thing, Sir John. There were fresh tracks of horsemen down by the glen as I came by this morning. That needs looking into. Richard, take some men around by the brook. Cooper, Giles, Whitter. Lawless, gather a party and lead them roundabout to cut the road behind them. Green Chief, you men there, come. Sadly, it often leads to errors in judgment, and in your case, a fatal one. Get him to the horses quickly. Come along. them all. Cover our retreat. Men, hell after them.
be no bargaining this time. Right you are, lad. We'll see who pays the reckoning. You have to do better than that. Remember this one. Well, I did. Here's one I didn't teach you. That one I taught myself. You sent for me? Yes, come in, Joanna. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I thought at time we came to a fuller understanding. I'm afraid I understand you all too well, Sir Daniel. Well, that'll make it all the easier. But I don't think you understand my authority as your guardian over the matter of arranging a marriage for you. Is this marriage you hope to arrange for me one that would give you permanent control of Sudley Manor? You are as sensible as you are charming. Your understanding is almost complete. Almost, but not quite. Do you really think I'd let myself live to be your wife? That is the one remaining point of misunderstanding. It's not your life that's at stake. Come here, my dear. Father. A very gallant gentleman. We'll make it a great occasion. The Bishop of Tilsbury will officiate, and our guest of honor will be the Duke of Gloucester himself. And when our guests are gone, your father will be permitted to go to France, in exile. I seem to have no choice in this matter. Very well, I agree. A wise decision, dear lady. Have I your permission to go now? Of course, my dear. Put the sewing women to work on your wedding gown. Easy, lad. You rescue neither Joanna nor her father with worry. There's only one way. We must get Sedley out of there. Then she can refuse to go through with the wedding. That's easier said than done. What about your friar's robes? Have you more than one? Half a dozen, if need be. A man of my taking ways must be content to pick up what he can here and there. But I have a great respect for the cloth. Never steal anything when I wear it. It'll be dangerous for you at the castle. They may recognize you. The only man who saw my face at Sir John's execution was Hatch, and you disposed of him. By the way, I forgot to do him honor. your cutthroat the Duke of Gloucester. I'd not like to be hailed before him for justice. Nor I now. He's no man of mercy. How could you fight for so murderous a villain? I fought for York, not Gloucester. There were ruthless men on both sides. Yeah, but none like yonder crookback. He murdered our good King Henry in the Tower of London. Heaven help all England if he ever becomes King Richard III. Quiet, you'll get our throats cut. Lord Bishop, all Tunstall is delighted to receive you. Good day, Your Grace. I am honored that you accepted my invitation. Well, I was pleased to come, Brackley. I don't readily forget my old battle companions. Thank you, Your Grace. Permit me to escort you to your apartments. What now? I have to see Joanna first. Distract those guards in the doorway. Then follow me to the upper corridor. Well, what have we here? Good English ale? Wine from France, Blythe, but too potent for a man of the cloth. 
I'm a better judge of that. <laughs> a blessing to you, my son, and good health. What about a blessing for me, good friar? I need one badly. Willingly, but my throat is so dry I can't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps this will loosen thy throat. <laughs> a blessing on all of you, my brave lads. Come, drink hearty. <laughs> to the king. To the duke. To the king. To the duke. To the king. Still, child, a body would think you were going to a funeral instead of marrying the finest lord in Tunstall County. I'm sorry, Dame Carter. I suppose brides should wear the smile of happiness. What are you doing up here, Friar? I come as a Samaritan. Wine from France. And pleasantly potent, my lad. Will you join me in a health to the bride? Aye. One to the Duke and the Bishop. One to ourselves. My turn again. There's a young friar in the anteroom, Mistress Sedley. Wants to see you before the ceremony, he said. A young friar? Who sent him, did he say? Only that he came to the castle with the bishop and the duke, the lady. Oh, better see him, child. It may put you in a better humor. Oh, Richard. I knew you'd come to me somehow. I've come to try and get your father out of the castle. Then you can refuse to go through with the wedding. But it's so dangerous, Richard. It's the only way. Whatever happens, you must go on with the ceremony until you know we've succeeded or failed. Yes, I'll go through with it and be praying for you. Your Majesty. That would be calling the wedding guest to the chapel. I'm afraid so. Remember what I told you. I will. Goodbye for now, Richard. My heart goes with you. Oh, drain the cup, oh, friends of mine. You should drink the clary. Shh. You'll ruin everything. You knife him? No. Should I? No, no. He'll do as he is. I'm afraid you won't. I'm sorry, Richard. Like all I'm saying, this will I? Overestimated myself and underestimated the French. Well, we can't stay here. Come on. Richard, I've failed you. It's too late to think of that now. But Richard, I... Hide in here. At least to the inner passageways. But I have thought of your plans, lad. Never mind, never mind. I'll try and save Sedley alone. I'll come back. Now hurry. I came to free Sir John Sedley and prevent this marriage if I can. Richard, you must know how dreadful this has all been for me. Your father's oldest friend. It'll be more dreadful for you if you don't stop your hypocritical whining and do as I tell you. Do? But what can I do? You can write an order to the dungeon keeper to let me take the prisoner. I'll do the rest. Oh, I wouldn't dare. Daniel would have me tortured to death. 
I'd do anything I could to help you, Richard, but I thought when I came home from the war, I was through with killing. Take your pen and write what I say. Write. Deliver the prisoner sadly. To this friar. Sign it. Not a sound out of you. Good day, Friar. I come from Sir Oliver Oates. Permission has been granted the prisoner to witness his daughter's wedding from the vestry. I'll open up for you, Friar. It is a kindly thought. Ah, indeed. Sinner though he be, he should be at least granted that privilege. One moment, Keeper. Who gave this friar permission to visit the prisoner? Sir Oliver Oates, my son, in writing. No offense, Father, but this is a very important prisoner. I'm afraid we'll have to take you to Sir Oliver to verify this order. I can understand your caution, my son. There's great need of it today. Be brave of heart. My deliverance will come in time. Friar, it's Richard Shelton. Disarm him and lock him in the dungeon with the other prisoner. If he gives any trouble, silence him. Yes, it would be a pity to have any disturbance while the Duke is here. Take him away. gathered here to unite in holy matrimony a son and daughter of our church. The solemn engagement by which you are to be united is not of a transient and momentary nature. It will bind you together during the whole period of your earthly existence. For what God hath joined, says the scripture, let no man put asunder, as nothing but death will be able to dissolve the union that is to exist between you. It is of the highest importance that you should implore at this moment that blessing of divine providence, without which you would in vain promise yourself any real happiness. Whatever may be your present anticipation, whatever the tie of affection that binds you to each other, the time of difficulty, the moment of trial must arrive when all the courage of a generous heart and all the piety of a true Christian will be requisite to sustain you, to enlighten you, and to protect from the fury of the storm the fair fruits of domestic peace. It is this that awakens the feeling of the deepest interest among those who... Richard was here, the but I've had him put into the dungeon. That's all to invoke upon you the favor of the Almighty. May he then extend to you those graces which will be the security of your earthly happiness and a pledge of your eternal welfare. Oh. 
Guards, close the doors. Let no one leave. My friends, don't be alarmed. The assassin will soon be found. Well, Brackley, for whom was the arrow meant? You or me? Your grace must realize my humiliation. That rebellious traitor, young Richard Shelton, slipped in with our guests. We have him in the dungeons. His accomplice who shot the arrow will be quickly found. I don't enjoy indoor archery, especially with myself as a possible target. Seems I'll have to teach you how to deal with these outlaws. We'll postpone this affair till the matter's been settled. Come, please. <laughs> Serves you right, say I, try to deceive an honest dungeon keeper with such trickery. But you didn't have me fooled for a moment, young man. Of course not. You're too clever for me. Ah, lad. Not with the wink of an eye did you have me fooled. I let you in, says I, as I pick up my keys, meaning to do just that. And keeping me eye on you all the time. I could have had me dirk in your back in a trice. And another thing. Go on. Ah, I'm with you, no more nonsense. I the hate. Enough of your talk, man. Open up, Keeper. Back from the door, you two, and turn your faces to the wall. Cut the bonds, at least. Would you let a man die of thirst? No fear, you'll not live that long. They'll have the gallows built by morning. Ah, oh, to think I let those Frenchmen get the best of me and bring us to such a pass. Ah, oh, the shame of it. Disgusting. Your Grace. Mr. Sedley, won't you sit down? Thank you. That must have been a very trying experience for you in the chapel. There was worse in store for me, Your Grace, unless you went to see him. We've come to plead with you to right a great wrong. Nothing pleases me more than to right a wrong that isn't one of my own. If you knew this girl's story, Your Grace... I'm afraid I know it already. Her father was a greatly wronged man, as are all Lancastrians. And he really didn't mean to kill Sir Harry Shelton. He didn't kill him. Sir Daniel falsely accused him. It was a conspiracy, Your Grace. I think before you go further, the man you accuse should be present. Catesby, send for Brackley. Yes, Your Grace. Have you no heart, man? If there's no more ale, at least fill me cup with cold water. And have you get those great paws on me throat? No, you don't, you murderous brigand. He's much too clever for you, Lawless. He's a man of deep perception. He knew I was no friar. I'm afraid he's too honest a man as well. Not even a gold coin could tempt him to take a message for me. What kind of a message? A most secret one. I'll have to whisper it. Well, whisper it and no tricks, or I'll drive this dirt to the hilt in ye. Down! Oh. Get his keys. There's a way to the battlements and moats, Sir John. You sure you and Lawless want to go through with this, instead of trying for the forest? I'm for seeing it through, wherever it ends. What do you say, Lawless? Aye, an arrow in the back or a swinging noose. What's the odds? Here's for it. You sent for me, Your Grace? Frankly, I thought it only just that you'd be present while your charming bride finishes the strange story she started to tell me. Thank you, Your Grace. Proceed, Mr. Sedley. Your Grace? When Sir Daniel had my father arrested... Cover them, Lawless. Shoot the first one to move. What's this? More assassins, Brackley? Take the door, Sir John. Silence the first one to open it. Now, Your Grace, I'll answer your question myself. Not assassins, but men unjustly condemned to die, and desperate enough not to care how, so long as they first have a chance to lay their cause before you. Your Grace, this is... Silence, it. Daniel. I'll run you through with as little mercy as you showed my father. So, this is the young traitor, Richard Shelton. No traitor, Your Grace, but the same Richard Shelton who was knighted by your brother, the King, less than a month ago. And since outlawed for consorting with our enemies, what sort of loyalty is that? Or this, confronting me with drawn weapons. I've had men in the rack for less. Here, Your Grace, I submit to any judgment you may pronounce, once you have heard my case. I'll hear nothing while your fellow conspirators still threaten us. Lower your weapons. 
Frankly, you were a good man in the field, but remind me never to visit you again without an army at my back. Now, what's this about your father's death? Are you accusing Brackley of murdering his own half-brother? Yes, and of condemning Sir John Sedley for the crime, and falsely reporting the matter to you in a complete tissue of lies. Then when he saw I was on the right scent, he set a death trap for me here in my own castle, forcing me to take to the forest for refuge. I deny each and every accusation, Your Grace. He chose to believe the trumped-up charges of our enemies. What proof have you to offer of these accusations? Only the word of Sir John Sedley, who, though an enemy of York, is a man whose honor is beyond question. There were three other witnesses, Your Grace, all treacherously slain by these same accusers, lest they live to testify in my favor. All this leads to nothing, young sir. The witness is dead, the word of an enemy outlaw and young renegade knight against that of a tried and true battle companion. Your Grace, I prove my loyalty on the battlefield. I stand ready to prove it again. I might concede as much in your favor. You may have been duped by the revengeful plottings of these outlaws. But in all else, the facts weigh heavily for Brackley. I see no reason to interfere with this wedding or the previous judgments against these Lancastrians. Then I claim my knightly and legal right to submit my cause and theirs to the highest court of all, on the field of honor. Trial by combat? My life against Brackley's, under the judgment of heaven. I protest, Your Grace. The church forbids such encounters. It's a true man's way of settling such disputes. And much more entertaining than a wedding. You've raised a challenge I'm bound by our ancient code of chivalry to respect. But you must limit your cause to the issues affecting your own life, honor, and happiness. If it please Your Grace, the fate of Sir John Sedley and his daughter's happiness is now one cause with mine. So? So that's the way of it, a romance. What say you, Catesby? May the challenging knight submit such additional appeals to this trial by battle? Now, Your Grace, it's been permitted in many cases. And you, Sedley, you willingly rest your hopes for mercy on the outcome? Yes, Your Grace. I only wish I were young enough to champion my own cause. And you, Bowman? I, Your Grace, I stand or fall with a lad's sword. What say you, Brackley? Do you accept this challenge? Gladly, if I must act as a mere executioner. Splendid. This will make my visit here memorable indeed. I ask the judgment against my companions be suspended, and that they may act as seconds in this encounter. Granted. I cannot lend my presence further to this forbidden arrangement, if you'll excuse me, Your Grace. Very well. Here is a gauntlet, Sir Knight. You know the proper ritual? By heart, Your Grace. This will be a severe test. Your opponent has many years' experience in the use of lance, battle axe, and mace. My cause be just, how can I lose? Well spoken. Now make your challenge. I do accuse you, Daniel Brackley, of being a foul and attainted murderer, liar and false witness. I offer to prove my charge and all that it maintains in mortal combat on the field of honor. And here with my gauge of defiance. I dub thee Sir Richard, my true and noble knight, and give thee this token to wear into battle, and preserve thee from mortal harm. Where did you learn that, Your Majesty? From the same ancient book of chivalry from which you took your challenge. Oh, Richard, I'll be praying every moment from now on. I'll be thinking of you in the chapel praying. I'll be at the list, not at the chapel. It will be a sorry world indeed when a woman cannot bear to watch the man she loves go into peril for the sake of all they hold dear. You really are a queen, Joanna. the Duke of Gloucester, the two knights, Sir Daniel Brackley and Sir Richard Shelton, will now settle all questions of truth and justice between them under the code of trial by combat. There will be no replacement of weapons. Each man must defend himself as best he can at all times, as there will be no quarter asked or given. Agreed, Sir Daniel? Agreed. And you, Sir Richard? Agreed. Then may heaven defend the one whose cause is righteous. Go. 
Godspeed you, Richard. Thank you, sir. Let him feel this, lad. Just below the shoulder. If your cause is just, milady, what need is there to pray? Isn't Providence looking on? One glance at your coat of arms, Your Grace, and it might turn its back on the whole affair. I must remember to tell that to Brother Edward. Tonight, I'm happy to see you're able to stand. I'll live, Your Grace. And so will all your friends. Sir John, the House of York needs friends more than enemies. I restore your estates and all former rights and privileges. My thanks, Your Grace. Your Grace, you've been more than kind. Please, my lady, you mustn't spread rumors like that about. You'll ruin my reputation. Oh, Richard, you are all right, aren't you? Perfect now, Your Majesty. <laughs> 